Anton. Hey Chris, how you doing? Oh great, it's good to be at White Lane Art Gallery, how's things? Yeah, things are good, yeah, um, it's, it's, um, it's been going really, really well. Um, so uh, we've been here since, well, over a year now, um, May before last, uh, the one just gone, we reopened and, um, and now we're, we're still going strong. Um, it's a lovely space, I always love coming here and, and uh, having, having my time here, because there's three of us that, that are here. So, um, so how did you get established here? Um, well basically, Glyn um, caught wind that there was a, a space here, in, in this space. Um, and his name's White, so he, wanted, so he thought it was a great idea to have his uh, a gallery in White Lane. Yeah, White Lane. Yeah, yeah his surname's White. And um, yeah, and uh, so that was a good, good coincidence. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, <clears> so Terry and Glyn, they, they were kind of discussing it with, um, you know, with, with the landlords. And they said, yeah, because this was previously a furniture shop and now it's an art gallery. Yeah. And it's brilliant. Yeah. So it's like, I think it's... Hopefully it's um, something to help push forward the art scene in Plymouth, you know? Because yeah. um, I think the amount of potential in Plymouth, I mean, just recent, just uh, about half an hour ago, some, some two artists walked in and said, yeah, they, they paint in their own house. Yeah. And yet one of them's like, well, they're both really good artists um, and they're both like doing really well for themselves. Uh -huh. um, and a lot of it's online. Yeah. Uh, a lot of their sales are online. Um, but like putting Plymouth on the map as a as a art hub, as a place, a creative place. So where did it all quite, where did it all start? And down at Sutton Harbour in Plymouth, there was a little little temporary space you can rent out for like pop up gallery. Yeah. So I knew a lady called Paula, um, who actually had a gallery on the Hope called the Therese Gallery. This was quite a few years ago now. Yeah. And um, I just I approached her with some. Like print out to my, my art. She said, "Yeah, come in, give it a whirl, see how it goes." So I went in there and you know had some paintings up there, and um, yeah, and like got to know Paula, real nice lady, and um, and then um, unfortunately it had to close down. But there was a pop up place on Sutton Harbour, so I went down there with Paula, we met all these people there, and that's where I met met Glyn. Yeah. Because you used to uh, paint that's where outside. I met you, actually. Yeah, it is. That's where I met no, you, you. we met down in the uh, in Sutton Harbour. Yeah, that's it. That's and then the place you told me about the gallery on the Hoe. Yeah. Which is near the pier on West Hoe. Well, yeah, because this is the thing. So then Dave Crocker was also down at Sutton Harbour. Yeah, he because he set up the gallery for the second time there, hadn't he? Yeah. So I think it was it was from there. Then then um, I think I don't know if I think Dave kind of chatted with with the owner of um, the cafe up on the Hoe, up on the yeah. seafront. I said, hey, what's going on with this? Can we open up again? Yeah, cool. Rent off him. So we rented off the cafe. We had this beautiful space, and it's like, you know, since the Tri's Gallery, it's very similar. It had these, these um, rustic walls and the, the white panels coming out. You can show your art. Yeah. And beautiful windows overlooking the hoe. Yeah. You know, the, the sea looked beautiful. See the sunsets. Yeah, sunsets. <laughs> I mean, even, funnily enough, especially in the winter, the sunsets would be amazing there. Yeah. But um, the footfall is very, obviously very seasonal. Yeah. So met so many people up there at the gallery on the Ho. Um, we all we all did like a day a week there. There was enough of us to do like a different person each day. Yeah. And it was just a really really nice melting pot meeting of loads of different artists, all then from it, around Plymouth, around Salt Ash. And, but and then he went into weekend sessions on the underpass on the Ho as well, didn't it? Yeah. So so from that, um, all the, um. We organised with well, Dave again. He's very great. Dave Crocker. He was quite a pioneering, motivating person. Motivating person. Yeah. <coughs> so he then, him and I think Jeff, who knew the guys that do the swimming pool, yeah, uh, that, that run the swimming pool on the Ho, had an agreement where we could do the colonnade under under the um, the pass. Yeah. So then we all like every weekend had like uh, frames. We'd set up our frames under the under the colonnade. And have our stuff put up, put up there. Yeah. And every weekend we'd have signposts, and then people would come down and look look at our work, and and that was during the time the gallery on the Hoe was open. Yeah. And um, so that was a beautiful time. Yeah, like really nice. We're always by the sea, painting. A lot of us were inspired by the sea, so 
it was a very nice nice setting but it was very weather dependent yeah you know, like the, the winds would come in and so so when you so, and Glyn first came into the barbecue and you went into a small studio uh, on a on, in a di different building didn't you that's right yeah so after the gallery on the Ho um, had to shut down um, it was a uh, Glyn Dave Crocker and um, and some other people. Yeah. So they all had had this studio up there. Yeah. So so and um, which is in New Street. New Street. That's yeah. right. And um, that studio is still going, and yeah. I'm still in there, which is great. It's had a few. When you need prison quiet and escape. Yeah, it's great. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, like um, and then Glenn kindly mentioned that um, yeah, there's there's a space available in the studio. Do you fancy joining? I was like. I was a bit on an R in at first because I was painting at home, but then I was like, nah, come on, I've got to get involved in this. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. And then, um, and then yeah, and that's... Because so, you were so all rubbed off with each other for ideas, didn't you? So you, now you're doing art cards and limited edition prints, which you weren't doing before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, absolutely right. I mean, and we you put doing pressure on each other to get things done. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Which can be a pain sometimes, but it's good in some ways as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeps you motivated. Absolutely does, yeah. That's it. I mean, working together with other artists is really, really good, actually. Yeah. Um, you can quite easily go into your own world with the art. Yeah, it's um, good for you keeping your communication skills going. Yeah, it keeps your communication skills going, and you can actually get inspired yeah. by each other and how each other are doing things. Uh -huh. I think... Um, so yeah, how, did you, how did you get into art in the first place? Oh, um, okay, so I got into art... Um, when I was quite young, I, was, I must have been about, well, okay, when I was really, really young, I was always drawing, yeah, I was always, I was always drawing, um, like, you know, the TV would be on, I couldn't just sit there and watch TV, I had to be drawing and watching TV, yeah. it was just, just what I needed to do, <laughs> and then, um, so then I started drawing with biro pen, stuff like that, and started drawing fantasy pictures, and then I started uh, getting really into surfing and like being by the sea. Because uh -huh. I've always loved the sea anyway. Um, so yeah, yeah, I got really inspired. Like the art and music side of things in my life were from my, my grandparents. They, they had a house in Brixham in Torbay that overlooked a harbour. Uh -huh. And I'm going up to see my granddad, you know, like the jazz would be playing, overlooking the, the harbour lights, you know, late summer, you know, late evenings in the summer. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so that was like the, the art, music kind of influence going on there, the jazz and everything. And um, yeah, and then, and then I got into surfing, just, just drawing waves with biro pen. Uh -huh. um, trying to map out the contour of waves and the sea with biro pen. Did you do art at school? Yeah, and then, then I, yeah, obviously I, was, I chose art as a, as a GCSE and then, and then went in straight into art college and did graphic design. Yeah. Um, but I always loved painting in, in my spare time. I was always painting. You know, I love computer graphics and stuff like that. Yeah. But then I'd get home and I'd truly escape into painting. Yeah. So, you know, when I was about, I don't know, it must have been about 16, no, no, 17, 18, I got into, it went from biro pen drawing of the sea to painting the sea. Yeah. You know, like surfing and waves and like storms coming in because it was quite so stormy around here. Uh -huh. You know, you, you get the ruggedness of the coast, so I'll start painting that, like big storms and sea and big waves and crashing around and stuff. And then, um, yeah, and then it just went from there, really. That's how I got into art. Uh -huh. Yeah, just um, from drawing with pen and, yeah, just since I was a kid, really. So what did you get out of art college or, or from the course, um, the college? Yeah, I got, well, it was, it was Apart really, from the certificate? Yeah. Uh, I guess composition and things like that, and, and, and use of colour. Yeah. Um, and how how to. In fact, funnily enough, uh, there's a teacher called called Helen in my first years of in, in like graphic design, and um, she she was saying, you know, when, when you draw, this was like funnily enough, like just before computers came in, and so she was like, you know, it was all about like letterset, like transferring typography onto paper and like and everything had to be out. done manually so you, you see you felt it and touched it rather than yeah it it monitors all the time absolutely yeah yeah absolutely yeah it was before the monitors you just had to feel it get textures going on get kind of like um the feeling of space and when it came to drawing it was like look at negative space yeah don't just look at 
don't just look at an object, look at the space, the shape of the space around the object. Yeah. And that kind of triggered something in me. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that really influenced me into like uh, in into sketching actually. Yeah. Like, then, then I used to go out on my bike to like Wits Hands and just sit there and sketch. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it just brought me into into start seeing the world with open eyes and taking in what's going on in the world around you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You just kind of absorb into what you're seeing so much more than you would normally. You don't just brush your eyes over an object, you're engaging and, and you're really... It's becoming almost a part of you, you know, your perception is so in, intertwined with the object. It's, it is the object. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and then so when you start sketching, you know, the cliffs and the sea and you become so immersed in it and then you... Then, then you then you finish and you're looking around and you're seeing the detail and everything. You're like, oh, life is so detailed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, so I mean, all your ideas come from nature, do they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, like only yesterday I went for a walk with my friend to like Rain Head in the South Cornwall. And um, in the clouds and the sky, I mean, the, the way the sky was last night, like yesterday evening, it's just... That's my inspiration. Yeah. So like how the wind blows over the sea and how how the clouds, you know, like move in the sky. Because you're also interested in the way light falls through clouds as well. Yeah, like, fascinating. Put a lot of detail into that. Yeah, fascinating. Like the the sun shining through the clouds. It's like phew, that's quite quite a quite a magical thing that we yeah that we that we all love. You know, we all we all love to see it, and it's this. Some of, you know, I mean... So what artists are you inspired by? Um... Yeah, that's interesting. I always loved... Because you're almost yeah. photorealism in some ways, aren't you? Yeah. I've always loved uh, Salvador Dali and Turner. Yeah. Love Turner. Um, <clears throat> I, Van Gogh. Like, some of his... The, the way he does the kind of expressionist lines is kind of... I found quite a... I don't know, quite a connection to how, how he might have felt doing it. Yeah. Um, uh, I think there was a painting, of, uh, it's like a cornfield and the trees and, and the night sky. Anyway, um, so, yeah, uh, who else? Oh, God, I can't, I can't think now. Um, there's so many. Um, get quite inspired, strangely enough, quite inspired by um, Impressionist as well. Because you've got quite your own style, haven't you? Yeah. And then like, you're experimenting with layering paints and mm. varied techniques as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, I definitely don't model my work on any particular artist or style. I just, it's nature. It's all about like how nature's moving and how light, light you know, like I said, the way the light's playing with clouds and the sea and and the rocks and and just like I don't know if. I'm not inspired by a particular artist, I'm just inspired by what I'm seeing, you know, I mean, I, but I must be, I must be in some ways, I mean, because I do, I do look at lots of art and I think it does, must definitely leave subconsciously an leave an impression, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you sell your work? You've got art cards. Yeah, yeah, I've got cards, um, greetings cards and postcards, but... We just mainly sell in this gallery, really. Yeah, because um, you had a few galleries at one time, didn't you? You were, you were looking at St. Ives. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had some work <coughs> in St. Ives in, in the Penwith Gallery for a, for a brief amount of time. Um, but I think my style, like the St. Ives style is so different to mine, as you, as you can see. From, you yeah. Know, um, but I, I, you know, equally get inspired by that because it's very, very, ex uh, the expression, you know, it's very free. Yeah. Um, and when it's done properly, it, it's really, really beautiful. Like the way, the way, um, the textures. I, I, I really do like textures. You know, funnily enough, I've got this. Because they concentrate a lot on light as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. The plain air. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a good time at that gallery. I felt really quite buzz off that. So, how many art cards have you got? Unlimited prints? Uh, I've got limited prints of most of my paintings, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. You paint them and they get prints straight away off them. There's limited yeah. editions. Yeah, I, li I like to have a digital copy of every painting. Yeah. And it's all recorded as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
So they're, they're all they're all limited edition <coughs> she clay prints, and um, yeah, and it's it's really it's really nice that that I can do them because the painting takes such a long time to do. Yeah, you know, like. Uh, because you're very intricate, it can take months, can't it? Yeah, it literally can take months. So what's the longest it's taken for you to do a painting? About a year. Yeah. Yeah, a year to do and a How much would you sell that one for? Is that one for sale for? Well, this is the thing, I mean... People don't seem to realise the amount of work you have to put into something, the way you do it. Yeah. And then they want it for quite often nothing. Exactly. So you can, you can do, you can do like... Oh, you can spend so so much time doing painting, like you say. It's but it's, it's part of really your personality being very intense and intricate, anyway, isn't it? Yeah, very. Um, you get in, in, you you get into it. Yeah, I get very obsessed. <laughs> very obsessed with the paintings that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, it's a good way to releasing your obsession of behavioural patterns. You were, so yeah. I guess I've got some. <laughs> yeah, but if I have got that, then it's definitely with the painting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Oh, mine's with my work as well. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think so. you've got to live and breathe it, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it becomes becomes most of your personality. So many, <laughs> how many art cards have you got? Um, I've got quite a few. Um, yeah, I've got loads of postcards. I've got some greeting cards. I'll just show you some of the cards if you like. Um, so here's in the gallery. We have a greetings cards rack here. Um, my stuff's down here, down the bottom there. This is a um, that's one of um, Porth Tower in North Cornwall. And you get the, the whole painting on the back, obviously available in print as well. That's yeah. like a section of it. I quite liked that little little area because you've got the flowers and then it expresses the, North Cornwall. The raging Atlantic Sea coming in. Yeah, so you've got, you got the, car, the serenity of the flowers and then next thing you've got this raging sea just down below it, you know. I think that expresses expresses North Cornwall really nicely, especially in the summer, you know. Yeah. Um, well, how much are those cards? They're uh, three pounds. Yeah. Um, each. Well, they're very well printed anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're quality design. Um, right up at the back as well, they do. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then you've got Glynn's cards here. They're 350, they're a bit bit longer. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, Wembury, a local, a local beach. And then. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, Glynn spe uh, specialises more on Wembury than anywhere else, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, and I think Lane... It's near where he lives. Yeah, it's near where he lives, yeah. Yeah, and he's got some um, paintings of this, some Dartmoor as well. Um, and, um, yeah, so that, that one there, that's a, one of the smaller beaches on Wainbury. Yeah. Um, he's called that Deacon's Bay because that's his dog's... <laughs> dog, he's called Deacon and that's his favourite beach. Yeah. And Do Deacon we've seen in other videos and he's like a mascot for the, uh, for the artist as well. He is, yeah. And then you've got, got Terry well. Coxon as well, haven't you? Yeah, so, so here on the card rack, you've got the, my prints are around the bottom here, and then, then you have Glyn's in the middle. Yeah. Then you have Terry. Now, now these ones are very... Surreal and... Yeah, he's got a good mix of um, local scenes and... Grunge. Yeah, and, he, and it's, the, it's the kind of image layering grunge photography that he does. Uh, I think it's, it's real nice. It's a, it's a nice touch, definitely. I mean, I love the composition of that one, with the, the poppies. Because th this idea was from Plymouth Hoe last year when they had the, uh, the, the uh, poppy monument there for a few weeks. That's right, yes, yeah, yeah. So, but, it um, wasn't, but it's uh, his own version of it, it's nothing to do with that. It's, he did it before, actually. Yeah, I think he did do it before, didn't he? Um, yeah, that's so, right, yeah. So let's yeah. Uh, walk down the seat gallery. Yeah, sure, sure, go on the gallery. Um, so this is Glyn's area, uh, part of Glyn's area here as well. That's right, at the entrance. Yeah, and this is a system print of mine. Yeah. And how much is this red print? Ah, oh, it's there. Yeah, it's 165 for that, um, limited, framed. That's, not, that's really good, actually. It's, it's like double mount there as well. Yeah. Um, Everything's well framed. Yes, yeah. And not done cheaply either. <laughs> no, that's it, that's it. So what's this one, Tom? Um, this one is, I think, it's, I'm going to call it The Dance. And it's... Um, Yeah, so um, basically here you have two two dancers, and um, 
yeah, and it's representational of the dance of, of life, really. And it came from the exper experience of going to the ballet or yeah, yeah, my, dance at the Theatre Royal. Yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. So, so my girlfriend introduced me to a, a ballet um, show. And um, I, think, I think I said this before, yeah, it's kind of inspired by Cinderella, but in the Second World War. So yeah. it's a really good mix of two themes. Uh -huh. And um, they're going about their day-to-day -day things during the wartime. But it was all a dance, you know, it was all, it was all you know, doing it in dance form. So yeah. I just, yeah, I just thought that was just so inspiring, really, because, I don't know, the dance of life is kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of... It's almost flamenco, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, everything's kind of, we're all, we're all playing a role, aren't we, you know? Definitely, <laughs> definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it, you know, we're all playing a role and our personality is our role that we're playing on this arena of life, you know? Yeah. So, um, and it's all moving as well, nothing's, nothing's stable, nothing's permanent. Yeah, um, it's, and it's for us to take control of the role that we're playing because other people try and push us into a different role. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Constantly. You need to stay true to your, who you feel you are, you know? So I'll, I'll show you the, one, the painting that took, took me a year to do. <laughs> Um, and here it is, the um, Eye of the Storm. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's one of my earlier paintings. And I'm very influenced by Biro, how I used to draw with Biro pen, and then it's just, it turned into that with layers of colour. Um, and yeah, it's just very inspired, like I said before, by those rugged, stormy um, times by the ocean, where it's really you just roar with, you know, with, against the raw elements, you know. Uh, how much is this one, Tom? Um, how much is this one? Yeah, 2,500. Yeah. It took a year to do. Um, I wouldn't expect, you know, I, I, once, once I've, you know, I mean, I, I think things could, could go in a really good way where I get more of a name for myself, but, um, but at, at the moment I'm, you know, I'm just selling what's a affordable at the moment, you know. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's hard in Plymouth, you know, it's, it's hard to really... Um, we talked about that before, it's a strange city, isn't it? There's lots of art here, but there's not an art market and people have to go outside town to sell the art. Absolutely. Even in the suburbs, it's a different mentality altogether. Yeah, yeah. Which is bizarre. It it's is. frustrating as well. Yeah, so what's this one behind us? So this is a um, Perimporf in North Cornwall. It was a moment where, where um, it was just beautiful. It was like, it was in January. And the sun was, uh, uh, it was about, about half ten, eleven in the morning, and the sun was quite low in the sky at that time of year. So it was casting, it was making the, the spray coming off the waves turn rainbow colour. It was refracting the light into a rainbow. So I had to, um, I really, really had to express that in the painting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the inspiration, it was like a, a performance of nature, it was like a theatrical performance. I mean, the peregrine was flying around the cliffs and there was a, there was a horse and a rider just out there on the beach. Uh -huh. And it was a moment that I had to... that I had to... Capture. Capture in the painting. You what know? About, what's, the, what's this one called? This one is Sky Dance. And it's it's um, obviously featuring local bird life. Um, but of course, there, it's, there's a few, few kind of... It's a bit symbolic. Um, it's kind of like... It's, it's the freedom, it's the freedom, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's the freedom that, that we feel when, when we see the birds hovering in the wind over the cliffs. And um, yeah, we try to get the effect of you're up in the air almost with them, you know? And the ribbon as well. When, yeah, the when... red ribbon, <laughs> passing the red ribbon, yeah. Sky dance, I guess it's... Um, what it's, made it's, you think of that? Well, it's... Um, it's kind of interesting. It was during a time where um, it's kind of, I guess, like it's hard to explain that one. It's to do with like meditation. Oh, Hi, yeah. Um, I can show you this this painting here if you like. Um, this one was inspired by uh, the hurricane that came what was it, last October called Hurricane Ophelia, and um, it it blew in from from the south. And it was a very, very interesting kind of storm because it was hurricane 
style and it drew up a lot of sand from from southern southern Europe and Africa, I think. It it, it drew up the sand. Usually from the Sahara area. From the Sahara, yeah. So because it was Morocco. coming from yeah. Like from from the south it was yeah, it was just very strong um like colours in the, in the sky. Uh, like like you say, the Sahara sand was making the sky look kind of lemon yellow. Yeah. And I remember waking up in the morning, and the sky looked lemon yellow. I was like, this is very strange. <laughs> and then, then I went down to the beach because I knew that it would be like a massive, massive sea. Um, so I went, went and I just just had a walk along the cliffs, and it was you know quite dangerous. You know, people were saying stay away from the coast because the wind is so strong. Yeah. Um, I just, I was like, nah, I've got to go. I've got to you go. also get high from the ions in the air as well when it's blustering. blustering. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It saturates the body with oxygen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just feel a different person afterwards, don't you? Yeah. yeah it's just like, yeah, just take a bit of the storm home with you. It's yeah, soon. your body. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so, so that was an ex um, experience from, from that day. Um, as you can see, the, um, yeah, yeah, just the... The, the, the sunbeams were really, they were obviously stylized in the picture, but that's how the beams looked, you know, as, as the winds were coming from the south. So what's been the greatest moment with your art so far? Greatest moment? Oh, I don't, don't know whether to don't know if I can pin one down, really. Um, greatest moment, I is guess. It, is it in producing something that you really like, or is it something that you sold to somebody, or...? Commissions or anything like that. I guess you can call it a great moment. I guess it's. What was it like when you first sold a, a major piece? It's very, very, yeah. It's really, really encouraging. You yeah. know, it makes you just think. You know what? I can, I can do this, and I can paint, and and just like, and it may, makes me actually work harder. Yeah. To like, you know, push forward to 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 get more work out there. You know? <laughs> And enjoy it, you know, because it's it's something that comes from a deeper place. So, you know, um, if people can connect with that, you know, like, an ex yeah, it's just an expression of the inspiration from nature, really. And, and they're the great moments. Do you intend to keep your own style rather than just adapt to what people want to buy? Yeah, I'll, I've been thinking about it. I think I want to keep to. I do want to keep to this style, but find a way where. It doesn't take me so long, although it is a lot about the process, I must say. It yeah. is a lot about the process of, of um, you know, like when you, you, you go through such a hard slog trying to get the, um, get the colours right on the base layers and then you get the highlights over the top and it all comes to life and it's like, you know, they're the great moments. You do, a lot of really well. you do a lot of meditating. Is meditating part of your art when you're looking into it? Yeah, massively. I mean... For instance, this this hurricane one again. I mean, I was meditating on on the cliff top. Yeah. And just the wind. It was me and the wind, and the wind was like blowing through me. You know. Yeah. yeah. And with meditation, you can kind of check in to the sensations in, in in your body, like in your arms and your feet and your legs and up up your core of your body. And, yeah. And You're aware of every part part of your anatomy, basically. Yeah. But when you get into that state, you can really feel it all going on. And it's all moving, and then the wind's blowing into you at the same time. Yeah. It's like there's movement going on in you and all around you yeah. to, to such intensity. It, you be, it just the, the boundaries of your, your your body when you're when you're just seeing your body free feeling. Yeah. Um, you're feeling your body, not seeing it. Um, the boundaries kind of blur when you when you feel the movement of the wind around you and the movement of all what's going on within this body. It's kind of it's very fluid. Yeah, and it all kind of it all becomes one experience. Yeah. So then, you become part of your body and and the, and the wind, you know. Yeah. And therefore, yeah, you kind of question, you know, where am I here? You know, <laughs> I'm just the awareness of this whole movement going on right now in this yeah. in this present moment. And yeah, it's beautiful. It's good to have that sense of awareness as well, because people aren't switched on to anything about themselves, and they're just living for the day, aren't they? Yeah. Quite a few people, a majority of people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, what we've, I mean, a big problem is, you know, like, you know, I feel very lucky living here, you know, because a lot of people grow up in, in really built up areas where, you know, there's, 
you know, you can still, you know, it's just nice to be out, out and about, obviously. Yeah. And go to the gardens and, you know, and stuff like that. But, and just, yeah, it's, I think a lot of... Because nature to artists is a form of poetry as well. Yeah. And I think, I don't think I could, I could express what, ex, what I express with the art if I lived in a, in like a city. You know, I don't like, think I could. I, of, yeah. I don't think I could. No, no, exactly. I mean, the, the, the money, you can't earn lots of money living, living in a place like this, but you, you absolutely, it, what you gain is priceless if you can really appreciate what's out there. You know, like, you can just, you can even walk from Plymouth, you can walk onto a foot ferry to Mount Edgecombe, yeah, and you can walk off to Rainhead, yeah, we'll or go up to Dartmoor, or we'll go up to Dartmoor. You can cycle up to Dartmoor, or Wembley. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah. You got every direction which takes you into the country. Yeah, you don't even need a car. If you've got a push bike, you can get out and get the train up to Newquay. Happy yeah, days, spend a few days up there. It's cool. cool. It's rad. So, would you like to be with your work? Hmm. Nice where, to be where, work. Yeah. Where, what, what it means is, where would you like oh, it to go? <laughs> sorry, yeah. Um, see, that's a tough one. I'm kind of taking it. Um, I don't know. I'd like to. It is a difficult one because it can sound arrogant, I suppose, if you say you want to be really successful. And yeah. As long as you make other people happy with your work and. That's it. They appreciate what you're doing. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. It make it make other people happy and um, and like see you know see into the into the art like. Well, it's as if, if it can channel onto the canvas, and that's cool. Um, but also, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, you know, be able to make, make a living off it, you know, it'd be nice. Yeah, well, the artist in here is about opening other people's eyes up to nature and the world around them as well, because that's mm. what your work's all about. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, and if I can, like, make a humble living off that, then that'd be unbelievable. And I'm yeah. kind of out, it's, it's, it's happening. Do you want me to show you another artist that we um, collaborate with? Yeah, yeah, go on, please tell me. Yeah. So Sue's an artist that um, we also met up at the gallery on the house and sort of all came together. So this and is Sue Wilson. Yeah. She's had a gallery here for years, hasn't she? Absolutely years. In yeah. White Lane. She's done really well and she's, you know, she's quite, she's an inspiration, you know. She's a, yeah. She's done, this is her livelihood, her lifestyle. So yeah, this is Sue Wills' gallery. And some, it's like an array of all sorts of beautiful colours and it's quite alive, this place. It's very alive, you know. It's got, it's got some abstract nice warm pastel colours, isn't it, everywhere? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's like a mix of a mix of um, plain air paintings and sketches. Lots of Plymouth themes. Yeah. And nature as well. Absolutely. Yeah, movements, styles. So she's part of your art arts group? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, you know, she she holds some like workshops in this gallery. Yeah. Um, with Glyn, like Glyn. And they also have art parties as well, don't they? Yeah, there's sort of um, well, there's yeah, there's uh, birthday parties like and um, people for like like just this morning, our children in like all um, f from different kind of upbringings and stuff like that, and they come in and. They all meet together and they, they were painting in here. They're all doing a big art class. And they, I was in the gallery over there now. Sound like they had lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. So this is a. And these are more scenes of Rame Head here as well. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah, I think that's. Um, and then you've got Mount Edge come as well. So it's all local. Yeah, yeah it's all the same kind of. Outdoor themes. Yeah. And Sue does commissions of animals for people as well, doesn't she? She does, yes. <laughs> yeah, she does commissions for animals. Um, yeah, and. Kind of baby portraits, I think sometimes. Yeah. Um, and her her daughter uh, does has completed her illustration degree, and she's got her illustration stuff over there. Yeah. And yeah, so there's lots of different stuff here. Interesting. And Carla has some. And also, there's some glass work here by Carla. Uh huh. And um, yeah, there's also beautiful stuff as well. Yeah, it's very good, isn't it? Very inspirational. Yeah, it's all very... And you all teach each other as well. And yeah. there's the influence of the dancing again. Yes, there's the ballet and there's the moon. That's the one you've got in a video painting. That's why I love it. I, that's, it's glitch, it's like... Yeah, but yeah, I love Sue's... Knock on effect. Sue's swan, yeah. 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 And Sue's on the White Lane Facebook website as well. Yeah. And she's got her own 
Facebook. Yeah, Sue Wells on Facebook, yeah. Yeah. And this Chris, is White Christy Lynn. Wills and Carla Rivas. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a big collection of us here, you know? Yeah, I'm just looking at the flags, actually. <laughs> and do you sell your work online? Uh, well, yeah, I, you know, people can contact me um, through my Facebook page or Instagram. How do you? What's that? Um, so on Facebook, it's T Bird Artwork, is my art page. Um, T dot bird artwork. Yeah. And um, Instagram is Tom Bird dot art one three four five. I think it is. It's, yeah, it's a bit, a bit random. But yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Just look, look me up on Instagram, Tom Bird dot art one three four five. Good. Right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Chris. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers.